I mean, I have to say, of course, the tragedies of misdiagnosis stick in one's mind as well, and they're much more difficult to talk about. So I guess we've all been there where we've been late or indeed missed a major diagnosis. I think those are the diagnoses that really stick in my mind. Uh, there are the heroic diagnoses. Uh, mm. uh, as David said, I, I remember a patient, perhaps simpler, but uh, she came in uh, breathless with a, a bit of a heart failure syndrome. Uh, but uh, a number of months before, a colleague cardiologist had put in a, a permanent pacemaker for heart block. And 18 months before, she had an inflammatory eye condition called iritis. So then if you put the three together, iritis, heart block and heart failure, there's a rather restricted range of conditions that could cause that. And she turned out to have sarcoidosis, which is a common condition, but it's usually presents... Condition. Well, I say it, yeah. it's, it, it's not rare, but it normally presents as a lung problem in a, a completely yes. different context. Yeah. And, and uh, so that was a, a smart diagnosis, a Hausian type diagnosis. But as David says, the ones that really stick in my mind are those, the third category we mentioned early, the, the not to be missed dangerous diagnosis that you have missed or made late. And a number of cases uh, uh, are where common chest pain that seems to be straightforward turns out to be aortic dissection, which is where you have a split in the big blood vessel in the heart. It's very dangerous. The hourly mortality uh, in hospital is one or two percent. So the daily mortality is 30, I don't know, many tens of percent and massively reduced by early surgery, even though there are risks to surgery. Uh, and, and you slightly get lulled, you see lots of chest pain, it all turns out to be two or three diagnoses, non-cardiac or uh, acute coronary syndrome, perhaps pulmonary embolism, and then you forget, even with the best will in the world, aortic dissection, and then it comes along and it, I'd say it bites you, but of course it bites the patient. And it, those are the ones that they, they, they they're the, if you think in 10 year blocks of one's career, those are the ones that flash up or perhaps a non-specific illness and you thought it was X uh, and you excluded X, say as a cardiologist you exclude endocarditis or whatever and it turns out to be a cancer that you hadn't thought of and you missed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they really do stick in your mind. They can slightly skew your diagnostic thinking but if you go back to uh, the, the first principles, if if there's a 70% chance it's A, a 20% chance it's B, and a 10% chance it's C, uh, and you're always making the diagnosis of B, or you're always making the diagnosis of A, it's, you really do need to question. And it does take discipline and effort to question all the time. And, uh, but they leave, uh, these misdiagnoses leave an uh, emotional track. And the successful diagnosis, of course, you, you, you you praise yourself, particularly, unfortunately, if someone else has missed it, that's human nature. Uh, but it's the unsuccessful ones that are, uh, we're a collection of unsuccessful diagnoses. And we could perhaps write a book on <laughs> missed and late diagnoses, be a bestseller, though there'd be issues with patient confidentiality. <laughs> but, uh,